This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. This is an 8-year-old gentleman who has pseudoexfoliation with a moderately dilating pupil. He has his classical sphincter atrophy, a rigid pupil, and is posted for cataract surgery. I have prepared myself for dealing with a diffuse zonular weakness secondary to pseudoexfoliation in this patient. I am ready with my CTR and a hydrophobic multipiece intraocular lens for the IOL trap technique. I am injecting 1 ml of lignocaine subconjunctivally, anticipating a slightly long surgery, just want the patient to be comfortable. The anticapsule is stained and a dispersive OVD is used to form the chamber. After creating the main incision, I am injecting OVD under the pupillary margin just to lift it up a little bit. I am using these Y hooks to stretch the pupil before inserting the BHEX ring. I usually prefer to do them in four directions. I am careful not to overstretch the pupil so that the sphincter does not tear. The BHEX ring is placed over the surface of the iris. I am using the micro forceps to the right side port to engage the first two sets of notches onto the pupillary margin. And by switching hands, the last pair of notches are engaged. I usually prefer the standard way of fixing the BHEX ring. The visibility is not great because of the corneal degeneration which the patient has. The rexus is initiated with the needle and as I am tearing, I can feel that the zonules are weak. But at this point, they don't seem alarmingly weak. So, usually I would have switched back to forceps but here I could manage them with the needle itself. I do cortical cleaving hydrodissection and decompress the bag. But it seems quite difficult to maneuver or rotate the nucleus because it seems that the corticocapsular adhesions are quite strong here. I inject viscoelastic to pressurize the eye and then attempt rotating the nucleus. It seems that the bag is also trying to rotate. However, I finally I could get the bag to disengage nucleus cortex complex and the nucleus could be finally rotated. Usually, I would have used a CTR at this stage itself before proceeding with emulsification. But in this case, I have deferred the insertion of the CTR since at this point of time, the zonulopathy did not seem very bad to me. As I aspirate the epinucleus and begin to sculpt, I notice that the maneuvering of the nucleus is not easy at all. I also feel that the nucleus is at a significantly deeper plane. One can notice this excessive space behind the iris here. When I am sculpting the nucleus, I can see that the whole bag is moving forward along with the forward stroke of the phaco tip, in spite of me stabilizing the nucleus. The wobbliness of the bag decreases once I stabilize the nucleus quite firmly with my second instrument during the sculpting maneuvers. The nucleus is split into two halves. I am using both the instruments to aid in rotating the nucleus. This seems to work well. The first hemi-nucleus is chopped into three smaller fragments. Now I find it difficult to rotate the nucleus because of the severe zonular laxity. Now I realize that early insertion of CTR would have probably minimized this issue a little bit as it would have provided some strength to the bag. Nevertheless, using the bimanual way of rotating the nucleus gets the job done. It is critical to use this technique of bimanual mobilization in eyes with diffuse zonulopathy. The second hemi-nucleus is similarly divided into smaller fragments and then each of these fragments are emulsified in a very controlled manner. I am fast forwarding this part of the surgery simply because it's just routine. Now moving on to the cortex aspiration part. It is challenging as invariably we will be having a very sticky cortex clinging onto the bag very dearly in such eyes. 
After inflating the bag with viscoelastic, I am careful to place my probe well below the anterior capsule and then just engage the cortex and very gently pull it out in a slight tangential manner and at a posterior plane, careful not to engage the anterior capsule. However, I can see the equator of the capsular bag is almost coming close to being engaged in the aspiration port. Luckily, it didn't get engaged and eventually the cortex aspiration was uneventful. Now at this moment, something interesting happens. Now, I'm trying to lift up the iris and I suddenly see some wave here. But it was not very obvious for me during the live surgery. Of course, now with the luxury of the replace, now I can make out that the fluid has probably gone across the zonules in that particular area, posteriorly to the burger space. But in during the surgery, I did notice a sudden change in the shape of the rexus. You can see the rexus has slightly shifted. It has become eccentric. Well, it all happened probably because of the localized zonular defect which is induced by the sudden fluid passing across it. Well, it's my hypothesis. Without any more delay, time to place the CTR into the bag. The bag is filled with OVD and then the CTR is gently guided into the bag. The situation seems to be well under control now. A multi-piece hydrophobic lens is placed into the sulcus. Time to remove the BHEX ring. Once the ring is out, we need to take care of the OVD. The OVD in front of the lens is removed. And the irrigation handpiece is used to wash out all the OVD which is gone behind the lens. Once all the OVD is removed, time to achieve the optic capture for the IOL trap technique. With the left hand having the irrigation handpiece and the irrigation continuously flowing inside, the sense cube in the right hand just taps the optic of the lens posteriorly so that we achieve this optic capture. The optic gently slides back into the bag while the haptics remain in the sulcus. Ovalization rexus at both the ends confirms the optic capture. The wounds are hydrated and that's it, the case is done. This is the first post-op day and there is some amount of corneal edema and the pressure is 28 millimeters. Well, some amount of retained OVD has probably caused a spike which is to be expected in an eye with pseudo exfoliation which would already have a compromised outflow. With the anti medications, the pressures have come down, the cornea is clearer and the vision is significantly better. The patient continues to do well. If I had a second chance, I would have definitely put the CTR quite earlier, just after the hydrodissection, which would have given me some form of counter-traction, which would be very helpful while maneuvering and rotating the nucleus. Secondly, instead of retracting the iris with an irrigation handpiece, I would rather have used a Y-hook or a Kuglen hook to retract the iris just to see everything is fine, because the fluid from the irrigating cannula just gushed out and entered, passed across the uh, zonules and entered in the area posterior to it. And an important lesson which for us to understand in this case was, whenever we see a sudden change in the shape of the rexus, it is an indication that there is an area of localized compromise in the zonules. That's it. Thank you for attention and hope this helps.